A key light can be many things, and that depends on the subject you're lighting and how you want to light it, but generally when people think of key light, they think of something large and bright and usually soft and pleasing on the subject. Today we're going to talk about how you can take a light that fits in your pocket and turn it into a larger, soft and bright light that can be used as a very portable key light. So let's get into it. Hey, I'm Scott and welcome to the channel. And if you haven't been here before, please do consider subscribing. We do all kinds of unboxings, reviews, tutorials, anything photo and video related. So today we're talking again about the Atom Cube RX1 from Pilotfly, a little pocket size light that I said was one of my favorite or one of the most professional feeling overall, just because it really feels like they were made with professional use in mind. If you wanna check out my full review on the Atom RX1, click on the link that's on screen somewhere right now, or go ahead and check the video description while I will have links to that and the light itself as well. In that video, I said that one of the coolest features of this was the ability to control a huge number of these very, very easily from the mobile app. And that's what allows you to use a bunch of these together in a group in a really easy way that makes them function as if they were just one light when you pair them together. Pilotfly also makes this little magic cube which allows you to link multiples of these lights together whether it's two or four or more. So physically these are made to be linked together and that really ties in together with the app being able to control groups of them so easily and it just makes it a lot less of a headache when you're trying to use these as one cohesive light instead of having to dial in the settings or adjust settings each and every time on each individual light you can just do it all very quickly with one touch of a button from the app. So today we're just going to quickly show you how to physically get these connected using this magic cube and then we're going to throw them up in a key light type position and see how it looks, how bright they are and then we'll put some diffusion on there and see if we can get it to look a little bit softer maybe and we'll see just how far we can push it and how much of an ideal key light this can be. Maybe something that will really be worth having in your pocket or in your bag with you when you are traveling and doing things like interviews on location. So first of all you can see in the corners here you have a hole that's built into the body, into the metal, so it's really, really strong. And that's where the uh, magic cube is going to connect to link these together. So first of all, we're gonna just unscrew this magic cube so that way you can get into two halves. Put the screw aside. And you can see that on the bottom half here, it has these little pins that will allow this to kind of link into those holes in the body we just talked about. So this is going to be placed the tall way in between these lights, and we'll just go ahead and slide each of these onto one of the corners. And then once you've got that, we'll place the other half on top. Then we'll just take our screw and drop it back in the center and tighten this down to hold these in place. Now, of course, you're gonna need to mount these somewhere. So there is also this uh, different shape of the magic cube that they have. And this is to connect either just two of the lights or to use in this configuration as a way to connect it to the light stand. This is almost the same as the other magic cube, except it only has connections for two lights, of course. And on the bottom, there is a screw thread. It's a 3 8 inch screw thread, which can be adapted. And it does come with this adapter to switch it over to a quarter uh, 20 screw thread. So whatever you need to mount it, uh, this can do it for you. So in the same way, we're gonna go ahead and attach this to the corner of two of these lights. And now we've got our four light combo ready to mount onto a stand or some other magic arm or something like that. What I'm going to do though to keep this in that kind of portable mindset is to mount it on top of this uh, self-standing monopod from iFootage. And what's really great about this is it has this little uh, base built in which you could remove and use this just on a tabletop if that's the kind of situation you're in in a hotel or something. But also, you know, obviously it's a monopod so you can get this up fairly high if you want to use it like a more traditional light stand. On top of that, literally, you have this kind of quick release little base on top of here which has a retractable built in 3 8 inch and quarter 20 inch screw thread so it works great with either way for this little adapter or the magic cube uh, and you can just remove it very very quickly from the monopod and switch it over to the little uh, short tabletop tripod if you want to or just take it off and pack it away very very quickly because of this i love the fact that this has this little self retracting screw in here i know this is not meant to be an eye footage commercial but hey this is a great solution for a stand to use with this on the go. So here I just place the monopod wherever I want and snap that four light configuration right into the top. If I want to get a bit more of an angle on there, then instead of connecting the lights directly to that removable base on the iFootage monopod, I can just put a ball head or something like that on top of that instead. Then to get started, just turn each of the lights on. All right, so as you can see, these lights are way too bright right now. I turned off my key light uh, and I have the camera settings exactly the same as I did before. And this is obviously way too bright. I have all four of them on daylight temperature at 100% power. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to the app so we can dial these back because I'm going blind right now. 
To get connected to the app is very, very easy. And I've already connected to these once. So as I go in there and I open the app, I don't have to do anything else. You can see one by one, they're gonna come online as long as the power is turned on. And then I can go over to group and I can choose all four devices because I want to control them all as one light. I'll switch over to CCT mode, which is the color temperature, your white light mode. And I'm gonna make sure that they're all in 5500 Kelvin and dial them back very, very low. So now you can see I'm at 7% and all of those lights follow that all at the same time. So let's go down to five and that actually turns it off. So we're gonna dial this up, let's say to 10. And I think that that exposure looks pretty similar to what I had. Uh, it's coming from the other direction, of course, because I put it on the other side is where my key light was before but that's just 10% uh, on these lights. So let's dial it up to, let's say 25%, and that looks like it's still pretty hot. Uh, but that gives me confidence because ideally, I would wanna throw some kind of diffusion in front of these. So if I can get this exposure at this low of a power level, then that means that if I put diffusion in front of that, I can still have enough punch to punch through and give me my good exposure. So let's dial these back to 15 for now, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw some diffusion on there, and we'll see what it looks like. Of course, there are a few different ways that you could diffuse this, and one of the easiest ways would be to use the kind of diffusion section of like a 5-in-1 reflector, for example, just clamp it onto a light stand and throw it in front of this, and that would give you a nice, large, soft light source. But, of course, I want to keep this as minimal as possible, something that you could literally bring with you in your pocket, so we're going to stick with that theme. And I'm just going to tape a few markers on there and drape some diffusion paper over there. So, of course, markers or pens or chopsticks or something like that are things that you could find pretty much anywhere you go or, you know, obviously easily bring with you. As long as you have gaff tape, you can tape them to that, and it's going to give you a little bit of distance away from the lights to have that diffusion paper, which also can fold up and go in your pocket. And having that little bit of distance will give it a bit of a chance to become a larger source with a little bit more of a softer effect. So I've gone ahead and thrown my diffusion paper on here, my makeshift pocket soft box, and of course this is going to differ from a proper soft box in that there's no sides here, nothing to really uh, contain and direct the light all forward. So you are going to lose some of the light compared to a proper soft box. However, I still have this at 15%, and you can see that I think it looks like a pretty pretty decent exposure, maybe a little bit underexposed. So let's dial this up, let's say to 25%. And I think that looks better. Uh, but this is still at 25%. And this is something that all of this, the lights, the uh, diffusion, the markers, is all gonna fit literally in my pocket. So it's incredibly portable and incredibly powerful. So if I go up to 100%, for example, you can see that's more than bright enough. You could easily throw more diffusion on there. Uh, you could uh, have multiple layers of diffusion. You could have it a little bit further away from your talent than I do right now. This is about an arm's length from me to the diffusion and then the actual lights are maybe another six inches or so uh, behind that. But this is totally acceptable for me. Just looking on the screen right now, it looks really good, I think. Uh, and I would not hesitate to bring this along with me and use it to record interviews or things like that on location. On top of the fact that it's portable, you really don't have to think about batteries or anything like that uh, because the batteries in here are gonna last for a long time on full power, you can get about three hours out of this inbuilt battery. And like I said, this is at 25% now, so that means that this particular setup would last for a long time. I wouldn't have to worry about time constraints so much. And again, especially for something that's super travel friendly, I think that's a really great balance. As you can see here, it's also really easy to control. I can easily uh, control the exposure or the color temperature, anything right from this app on all four of those lights at the same time. So despite the fact that I'm using four lights instead of one, it doesn't feel like I'm using four lights instead of one and actually being able to use it with this app means it's a little bit easier to use from a distance than some proper video lights are that don't have a remote or anything like that. But once again, if you want to see my full review of these lights to see more of what it has to offer in terms of the RGB control, uh, the full color range, the, the light quality, special effects, everything like that, then you can check that out on screen or down below wherever the link happens to be. And hopefully you can find the information you're looking for. But I mean, I really, really highly recommend these lights. Just the flexibility of how you can use them in such a situation like this so easily is just absolutely amazing for me. However, if you do have any questions or comments, please leave those down below and I will do my best to get back to you. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to see more in the future, hit the little bell icon to make sure you're getting those notifications. And as always, thank you for watching.